Welcome back to Marvel Live. We're back. I'm Langston. I'm Angelique. And we are here with the Ryan Minerding. Wow, that's very nice of you to <laughs> say I mean, the. Look, you are the, I feel like when you are the head of visual development at Marvel Studios, there should be a the in front of your name. Well, that's very kind. I yes. appreciate that. Uh, how's the convention been? Welcome to the Marvel Live Stream Lounge. What's it been like being back at the Marvel booth? I mean, it's amazing. I, I've i missed it so much. Every year would roll around and we'd get to come here, and I didn't realize how, I mean, I did realize how fortunate it was, but the fact that it's been gone for a number of years, and, you know, I missed it tremendously. So it's amazing to be back. I love it. Amazing, and yes. you've done so many incredible things throughout your entire career, but what I love to ask is, you know, how did you get your start at Marvel, and, you know, talk to us about why you have such a passion for this work. Oh, right on. Yeah, I mean, I have a passion for it because I grew up with this stuff. Right? I mean, watching Saturday morning cartoons, watching Spider-Man as Amazing Friends, you know, I love the stuff. I Some of the stuff I had back then I still have. I stole it from my parents' basement. I have a Spider-Man beach towel that I would fight my brother for when we went, you know, when we went to the pool. Um, and, you know, all of the licensing art that John Romita Sr. drew, I, it was on all of the products that I had, which was, that was like my entrance into into the characters. Um, cartoons came next, then comics, then then the video games, and, 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 and onward, right? Um, my path at Marvel, I actually had worked with John Favreau previously on a, on a, on a project that, that um, he sort of decided to go do Iron Man instead of, and, and I, got, I got the chance to, essentially, he asked if I would come work with him on, on Iron Man along with a few other uh, you know really talented artists that I had, I had worked with too so John brought me in um, got to work on some cool key frames he, he said like figure out what you know what what could Tony be doing in the garage when he's <laughs> building a suit and I was doing like key frames to help to find that sequence and working on Tony and you know escaping the cave and yeah. um, so I don't know I mean I, I got to work really closely with John and got to know a lot of the producers of Marvel and Essentially, they I guess they enjoyed working with me and, and asked me to stick around and, and do some really early stabs at Captain America and Thor, mm -hmm. you know, before before those projects were, were getting going. So, I don't know. It's it's been it's been around 16 years mm -hmm. and a lot of projects, and I've considered myself to be one of the most fortunate people on earth. Yeah, and we are fortunate to have you working with Marvel because you have we have you to thank, and the Marvel fans have you to thank for helping to bring our these characters to life. So I want to talk about that process. What is it like? taking a character from a page and going, okay, I have to make this into a real three-dimensional person that's going to wear this suit, that's going to be on an actor. Like, what goes into, like, like really going from zero to that finished product? You know, it, it's, in, it's different with every character mm. because each, each movie we try to obviously look at through the lens of what's going to make this character really work. Um, and in the case of Iron Man, I mean, a lot of that was... We knew we had to design something that felt like a higher level of precision than what people were used to with just like normal suits of armor. So mm -hmm. the idea of designing it with like an, an eye towards almost car design. So some of the amazing artists who worked on that, like Phil Saunders, Nadi Granov, you know, we, we, we were always just trying to make it look as precise and amazing as possible. And we would do drawings, show them to, to Kevin and, and, and John in the early days, and, and they would say, we like this, we don't like this, we want to change that. And we would, we would fix it in the, in the illustrations and, and designs. And then we would build it in 3D. And the idea of taking that drawing, bringing it in 3D in the computer and fitting it over Robert and seeing how he looked in it. And essentially, um, then the place like Stan Winston Studios or Legacy Effects would 3D print that and actually put it on him and test it out. Um, in, in the case of all the other characters that are more costume-based or like one like Thanos or the Hulk, it's a similar process where we're still doing drawings and paintings to show stuff early, get people's read on it, um, understand what versions they like from the comics. You know, some of these characters have 80 years of, mm -hmm. of, of history, you know, like the, the idea of looking at that stuff and saying, you know, this is the version we find amazing. It's, it's a really easy shorthand, gets us started. And then, and then we just draw it and paint it as realistically as possible, try to inject as many ideas as we can and, and you know, take the notes and, and, and do the work. And hopefully they say that's amazing <laughs> at the end of the day. Nice. Well, you know, you mentioned this has been 16 years and a lot of projects and a lot of characters. And I hate to say, is there a favorite, but is there like a, a project or a moment or experience that you feel you're most proud of or you just think like, man, that's cool. We pulled it off. Um, I, you know, there's there's two easy ones for me to answer and I can't pick between them, probably between Captain America and Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. But having worked on Cap like in the early, early days, 
and then seeing him transition from his first movie into the Avengers and then all of his subsequent designs, I'm really proud of the idea of being able to chart that journey over all of those movies um, because it's a strange thing. I think a lot of people think of superhero costumes as existing as like only an icon and mm. One of the most fun parts of my job is thinking about how that costume is going to tell a story for that film um, and working with the filmmakers to understand what story they, they are going to tell. Um, and I don't know, that journey, I think, it's, it's, it's about 10 costumes of going from where he was in World War II up, up until you know, the end of Endgame. That, that's something I'm super proud of. And then the idea of trying to take Spider-Man um, and bring him into the MCU and what, what that was going to look like, working with, with Sony and a Amy Pascal and John Watts and Kevin to figure out the notion of um, you know, what Spider-Man was going to be in, in, in our universe and you know, be inspired by Tony Stark and a more technology-based Spider-Man at the beginning and where he ended up at No Way Home. But it was, again, one of those journeys that I'm just super ha super proud and happy to have been a part of. Nice. We actually had, uh, I think, almost all of the cap suits either last, the last Comic-Con. Oh, right on. And yeah, that yeah. is because that's hands down my favorite realization of page to screen, seeing Captain America like. I was like, that's the coolest look in the world. Now, you talk about all these different variations. Is there any character that the initial design, it didn't change much until the finished product? You were like, I think, I think we got it. Um, oddly enough, there's only one or two, but I, one of them is the Captain America stealth suit. I did one. Mm. I did one design for that as it appeared in Winter Soldier, and, and that was that was the one that that it was it. So mm -hmm. I, it was like it's a cool, it's a really beautiful design from the comics that that honestly compared to other Captain America designs are, is not as challenging to accomplish because mm. it's dark and you know, he's got the stripes up top. But um, yeah, like. That compared to the, the Sam Wilson Captain America, which has a lot going on, um, was was super challenging. But that, that's another thing. Like just the idea of transitioning Captain America over to, to Sam was another huge thing that was super fun. I love great it. Great to be a part of. Well, thank you so much. I know you've got so many other things to do here at San Diego Comic-Con. It has been a pleasure having you here on Marvel Live. All right. Thank you. Thank you for having me.